another oil that often pops up is coconut oil. This one's been pretty hyped up over the last five or ten years. People putting it in their coffee, cooking with it three times a day. It's it's become a quote unquote sort of superfood. I've suggested to to this community it's probably not a great idea for folks to use regularly anyway. What are your kind of thoughts here on coconut oil? So if you want the quick answer, it's good for maybe your skin and hair, but not good for your heart. <laughs> no, so I put, I put a video on this because I keep I kept getting that question too, and I, I think I tagged you in it. Coconut oil does raise your LDL, and significantly, it's not like a small amount. I believe it was like 10, maybe 20 millimoles, like like per 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 deciliter or whatever. Um, but it does go up and 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 we know the higher and 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 we know from all the studies we've talked about, the higher the LDL, the higher the cardiovascular mortality, cardiovascular event rates, um, pretty much everything goes up. So fish oil too, people will say, well, isn't fish oil healthy? So it, there was a time in the past where we thought giving people fish oil was a great idea. We even made it a prescription medication called Lovaza. It was EPA and DHA fish oil. They found that people in Japan, they ate more fish. Maybe the fish oil was protective. They did a few like, you know, studies looked okay. Once we actually started giving people this, their LDLs went up, rates of atrial fibrillation went up, um, inflama inflammation, inflammatory markers went up. So we said, okay, this is a horrible idea. Let's stop doing it. So we stopped fish oils. People thought, well, we should take it for triglycerides. Well, that just makes the number look prettier with no outcome data. You're not living longer. You're not reducing cardiovascular mortality, event rates, anything. Why are we trying to just make a number look pretty? Kind of like how they used to give niacin for HDL. We used to think HDL is protective, and, and it is to a certain extent, but we used to give it way more you know, importance than it needs. We would put people on niacin. And it takes about a year and a half before you notice the HDL go up on niacin, but then it didn't translate into reduced mortality, reduced cardiovascular death, any outcomes data. So we said this is also useless. It was called niacin, the uh, prescription version of it. So then they decided, well, let's let's take out DHA and use only EPA, only that part of the fish oil. And they made a new medication called Vasipa. And supposedly they did this trial and it showed a 22% reduction in all this stuff. But it turns out they're comparing it to the placebo, which was mineral oil, which was a pro-inflammatory oil. Dr. Nissen out of Cleveland Clinic went back, reran the numbers. It was called the strength trial. And they did it against a non-inflammatory oil, which was corn oil. Uh, and it turned out it had no effect, no benefits, no reduced mortality, no reduction in anything. So we've gotten away from that. But it still did cause uh, atrial fibrillation. For those who don't know atrial fibrillation, your top two chambers of your heart are supposed to squeeze like this. They don't squeeze anymore. They just quiver. It's an irregular rhythm. It doesn't kill you, but it can cause strokes. It can cause all kinds of things. It makes you very short of breath, very fatigued. Um, so we've gotten away from that as well. Both coconut oil and fish oil both raise your LDL and fish oil can give you atrial fibrillation, assuming you're obviously already prone to it. It's not going to magically give it to you, but the incidence of atrial fibrillation went up. 